Cupping is one of the strategies that's helped the most with my cording. I covered cupping for cording in a previous video, but I wanted to do a deep dive and cover the steps in more detail. Hi, I'm Erica. I'm a breast cancer thriver and a chiropractor. Cording can develop in the armpit area after breast cancer surgery where lymph nodes were removed and can extend variable distances down the arm. Cords often extend at least into the upper arm but they can also extend down to the forearm as well. They can extend in the other direction from your underarm area into the side of the chest. My cording in this area was quite pronounced and I felt a lot of tension here. Cupping works by releasing tension and promotes movement between the cords and some of the tissues that they can be adhered to, things like muscles and fascia. I'm going to be focusing on dynamic cupping in this video where the cups are going to be moved along the surface of the skin. There can be some bruising that happens along the path that you're releasing. My favorite cups to use are actually marketed as a facial cupping set, literally. They come in a set of four, which is what I have, and it's helpful to use different size cups on different areas of the cord. These cups in particular are really easy to use, which is important when you're trying to do cupping on yourself. How do you know if you're using the right size cup? I'll let you know what size cup I used for each of the areas, but there's no standard size because everyone's body type and shape are different. You know you're using the right size cup if you can easily create suction and you can maintain that suction for at least a few strokes back and forth. If you keep losing suction, the cup is likely too large for the area that you're cupping and then air is getting in. You'll want to size down in this case. Where to do cupping? I'm gonna review three areas to release for cording. Your upper arm, your lower arm, or called your forearm, and your underarm area going into the side of the breast. The order that you're doing these in doesn't matter. The area that you're releasing in that specific section also doesn't matter where you start. So whatever works best for you. The first area is your upper arm. I find the largest cup works best for this area. You'll want to apply cream along the path that you're gonna be cupping. Set yourself up in a position where your arm is out to the side. It can be helpful at some points to rest it on something. Squeeze the ball so that it suctions your tissue and then move the cup along the cord back and forth a number of times. Next, reposition the cup on a different section of the cord and move it back and forth again. You'll definitely feel the pull of tension when you're cupping. This tends to be a deeper treatment compared to what a massage would feel like. If you're finding it too uncomfortable, you can squeeze the cups more gently so there wouldn't be as much suction applied. I find it awkward to do the entire length of the cord in one swoop, so I prefer to do smaller sections at a time, go back and forth, and then move to the next section. Try to cover as much of the cord as you can from that underarm area down the arm to the elbow. I could always feel the cording running down my arm, but if you're having trouble finding where your cord is, you can hang on top of a door frame and then just sink your body weight down. This tensions the cord and makes it more visible. You wouldn't need to do the cupping in this position. It's just to check to see if you're in the right path. The second area to release is your forearm. I typically use the third smallest cup for this area. The steps to perform cupping are the same in each of the areas. Set yourself up in a position where your arm is resting in front of you. Place the cup anywhere along the cord in your forearm area, usually starting at either end, either near the elbow or just above the wrist. Squeeze the ball on the cup and then move the cup along the cord back and forth a number of times. Next, reposition the cup on a different section of the cord and move it back and forth again. When cording is present in the forearm area, it's usually on the inner portion of the forearm, not the outer. My cording wasn't as visible in my forearm area as compared to my upper arm, but my range of motion in my wrist was reduced from the cording in my forearm, so there was still tension there. I did spend less time cupping the forearm area as compared to the other two areas that had more significant cording. The third and final area is your underarm area into the side of your breast. 
I typically use the second smallest cup for this one. I'm showing this area last as it's a bit more awkward to do as compared to the previous two. With your arm raised up, place the cup in your underarm area where you see or feel the cord. Squeeze the ball like the previous examples to create suction and then move the cup back and forth along the cord a number of times. Reposition the cup on a different section of the cord and repeat. You may only need to do this part of the cord in two sections as it's a much smaller area to cover. The cording that extends from that underarm area into the chest can sometimes link up with your breast scar. This was the case for me. My mastectomy scar was right across the center and I noticed the cording went literally right into that outer portion of my mastectomy scar. If you notice this as well, then you can also do some cupping that goes right up to that scar. As with the first example, you can traction the cord by hanging to make the cord more visible if you're finding it hard to see. If this video has been helpful to you, hit that like button below and if you're new here, consider subscribing. How much time can you spend cupping? Cupping for cording isn't something that needs to be done daily. It's a deeper and more aggressive treatment in a good way, but you'll want to spread out the frequency that you're doing cupping because of this. How long you do this also depends on how stubborn your cording is and how motivated you are to address it. I did this once, maybe twice a week and combined it with a few other things to address my cording. There were six other strategies that I tried and those are in the next video. Try them out and let me know which ones you found the most effective. See you next time.